So we're going to look at the guanyl cyclase pathway. And so basically, what happens with guanyl cyclase is that you have two different forms leading to the formation of this uh, compound. So we have our membrane here. And this is one of the receptors. And this receptor right here is, is called the, it's for the natriuretic peptide. And it's known as the particulate one ale cyclase route. We also have the soluble guanyl cyclase route as well. In the natriuretic peptide route, you have binding occurring at the particulate um, GC receptor, and this is going to lead into the production of, or the conversion of GTP to CGMP. So we have an increase in CGMP. And as we learned in the last video, when we have too much CGMP, we're going to use different phosphodiesterases, such as PD1 or PD5, to be able to break down CGMP when we have excess. Now the other route we can take is actual, actually the soluble route, where we start with NOS. It's, for, it's converted into NO, so NOS is nitric oxide synthetase, and it's converted into nitric oxide, which nitric oxide is soluble through the, um, the plasma membrane. And now we have an increase in soluble guanyl cyclase, which leads back into the conversion of GTP into CGMP, which increases our CGMP as well. So there are two different routes, the, the particular route and the soluble route, leading to production of CGMP. So keeping that in mind, let's look at some of the other pathways. So now we can go into the serine threonine pathway. And this is a camp dependent uh, protein kinase. So it's going to have two regulatory regions. And so that has two regulatory subunits. And it's going to have two catalytic subunits. And whenever CAMP is around, CAMP has the ability to cause the catalytic subunit to dissociate from the regulatory subunit. So I'm going to label these as R. And now they're in the bound state with the catalytic subunit. But what happens is when CAMP comes in and binds onto the regulatory units, it causes a decreased affinity for the catalytic subunit, leading to the formation of active PKA. So now we have the regulatory subunits, and the catalytic subunits are going to leave off. And this is only occurring again because it's CAMP bound. If you need to refer back to the uh, G protein couple receptor video on how we're going to produce CAMP. So what you should know is at basal levels, the concentration of CAMP is pretty low. So we need to basically make CP, CAMP or increase the concentration of CAMP for this to work.
And then that's basically everything there is for this pathway. I mean, it's pretty simple. And leads into a lot of different things that are important from the body. And just so you remember, um, if we need to, once this, once we've produced enough active PKA and we want to return back to normal, what we're going to use is phosphodiesterase 4, and this is going to basically convert the CAMP into 5 prime AMP and then we're going to basically return back to this inactive state. This could also be achieved through phosphodiesterase 1. So you can use either route to get to the same product. Well this video is kind of short so um, if you like the video or have any questions, let me know. Uh, write in the questions, uh, the caption below. If you any, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel.